Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included in the Ultimate Base 2.0. In the previous episode we fixed and improved on a bunch of systems and today I would like to tap into Magma Power. We have all of this magma at our disposal and I believe it is about time we make use of it. In one of the previous episodes we pushed down the magma so we have one flat layer that we can utilize here. I would like to get things started by tiling out a couple of these guys. Maybe up to this point we're gonna do two rows and afterwards we're gonna start with our insulated tiles. Now how much ceramic do I have? About 12 tons. I would say we're gonna craft a bit more. Let's queue up another 99 crafts. And another thing I'm definitely gonna need is some more steel I would say. I'm gonna craft about 20 more of these. In the meantime, we're still collecting materials on the other planetoids, pumping out the gases here. And Marie still has plenty to do here on Groista, so I won't have to take care of any new tasks right now. There we go, Jean has started the project, thank you very much. So maybe let's think about this already. Right here is gonna be the start of my contraption. I want to have as many steam turbines as possible and power them up using the magma only. Let's say we're gonna utilize the entirety of the bottom here until the ladders to make our power contraption. So that means somewhere at this point I would like to have my liquid lock in order to get down to this level but also right here where I want to have my steam room. Actually what we could do is make the lower part here the steam room and then have the steam turbines on top of here so we don't interfere with the volcano and we will still be able to use it. We might switch up the location of our liquid lock in the future, but for now, I think this is going to be it. And then essentially, right as of this point, we can get started with the ceramic layer. This is gonna be the steam room on top the steam turbines, but we're gonna start this from the left to the right. So if we do something like that, we will be able to easily access it. We can deconstruct a ladder, replace it with a bottle emptier. We do not need to replace the airflow tile, at least not for the foreseeable future. Alright then, let's just see how much of it we can get done, not too much. That is no problem as we are now crafting more ceramic. I guess the task here on the top we can also do with other materials such as granite. And I would like this to be a 4 high room, this is going to be for my steam turbines. Though this neutronium might be in the way a little bit, let's see if we can come up with a nice pattern so we can still keep things symmetrical. Let's see, if we get started with a couple of steam turbines we could set up four of them before the neutronium gets in the way. You know what, this is gonna bother me in the end. Let's just make this the steam room, then it doesn't matter that we have some neutronium in here. And that means I can start setting up my steam turbines here on the top and I will not have to worry too much. This obviously also means this needs to be a ceramic layer, so we're gonna need a little bit more ceramic to finish everything. But it will be worth it for the symmetry. This also means the volcano right here is actually going to be my border for the contraption. I mean this is gonna be large enough considering each of the steam turbines is gonna provide us with essentially free power. Yeah, you know what, let's just continue with the build here a little bit. The only thing that actually needs to be ceramic is the layer beneath the steam turbines. And then everything at the bottom is just gonna be vacuum and magma so it doesn't really matter. Maybe preferably we would use metal tiles to fill this up. Somebody just got trapped. Oh no, what did you do? <laughs> well, that is not good, but we can build a obsidian ladder here. Okay, and now you can get out of there. So what I meant to say is we only have to use ceramic here on the top of the steam room and at the bottom we're gonna use some iron tiles in order to distribute the heat we're getting from the magma. So all of this here at the bottom can be iron tiles for instance and then we're gonna use some steel tiles to actually get down to the magma layer. As a matter of fact, this tile here on the top can still be iron and then I'm gonna use a mechanized airlock. Let's uh, actually go with steel for this one. So that's gonna go right there and then we'll just keep going with normal steel tiles here at the bottom in order to suck up the heat through the door towards the tiles and then the steam. We could also think about using one mechanized airlock per steam turbine in order to distribute the heat a little bit better. Actually, that might really be worth thinking about and I might just do that. Yeah, I mean, why the heck not? We can just keep going with this all the way to over here until we have no more room for it. It's gonna be a gigantic contraption. Alright, we've made some substantial progress. I'm still smelting some iron as well as steel to finish this. But I decided for the first version we're gonna go with 10 steam turbines. 
We're gonna have this temporary liquid lock in order to get into the steam room in case we need to change up a few things. Maybe increase the amount of aqua tuners we have running. But eventually this liquid lock can go. You can also see I dragged over a bunch of pipes. This is simply connecting to my water system so that we can fill up the steam room with water. And then I also dragged another pipe that is coming from my oil reservoir. Actually, I totally messed this up. What we wanted to do is connect up with the oil pipe right there so we can fill up the liquid lock with something that cannot evaporate this quickly. The next steps we can take I presume is going to be a little bit of automation as well as the output for the steam turbines that we're going to do with either granite or igneous rock. I guess since we are in a vacuum it doesn't really matter. Let's just go with granite. But it needs to be insulated piping and we want to drop it right here on top of the door. So all of these are coming out the same way, dropping the condensed water back into the steam room. We obviously also need some vents, one for each of the steam turbines. Next up, in terms of automation, we want to be capable of measuring the temperatures. So we will need to install a thermo sensor. I'm gonna make this out of copper just so that we use this up as well. And I'm gonna place one on top of each of the doors we have installed. Tapping into the magma could be a little bit more dangerous than I first anticipated since we cannot leave the airflow task here wherever we want the access to the heat. So we're gonna have to exchange both these tiles here with insulated tiles and the middle tile here needs to be a steel tile to actually catch the heat. And then eventually some of the magma here is gonna solidify. Once it has cooled down enough we can dig further into it. Let's see, yeah, right now we're still crafting some iron ore. I'm guessing I'm gonna need a tiny bit of steel as well to get things started. At least one steel block for each steam turbine. I was thinking about actually making individual rooms for the steam turbine so that we can hook up a power control station, but I do not want to waste the duplicate labor or the refined metal for that. This should just be, you know, a temporary thing until we utilize the heat of all the magma we can see down here and afterwards the system has basically become useless. However, what we are still gonna need is more steel for at least two thermo aqua tuner. I decided to go with two to begin with so that we can cool down five steam turbines each. Should be a good and secure starting point. Another thing we are gonna need obviously is some automation wire. I'm gonna go with copper, however, we need to be careful. This tile right here is probably not gonna get too hot. Let me quickly check on the properties here. Yeah, this can go all the way up to a thousand degrees. So if we use copper for these two tiles and then steel for these two tiles, we should be fine as the steel door might get heated up considerably more, but the tiles above the door shouldn't get too hot. So we are gonna do all of these with copper wiring. But you know, this is why we keep a liquid lock just in case something doesn't function the way we anticipate it would. And then for the other wires, we need to switch over to steel. So the wires covering the door should be steel. Maybe we could get away with iron, but I don't necessarily want to risk it. Now it would be great to actually finish those sensors first as well as all the cabling so I can temporarily open up all the doors and kind of have a control over it. Before we do anything else, that's crazy. Also, I would like to get these pipes done. That would be absolutely amazing. And we will be able to bring the liquids down where needed. We already have enough iron maybe even to finish it. No, not quite. Just a tad more to go. However, we should definitely have enough ceramic in order to at least finish the top layer there. Now, actually, there's one thing I would like to change, namely exchange this part of the pipe with a bridge so that later on we're gonna have an easy route with the cooling solution. So bridges for each of the steam turbines. Yeah, I think that's gonna be the more elegant solution. If we leave the sensors at the default value in vacuum, they are actually gonna send a green signal and therefore the mechanized doors are all gonna be open. That's gonna save me some time. Okay, I'm gonna let them progress a little bit further and be back in a couple of minutes. Alrighty, it is a couple of cycles later and it looks as though we're practically done with building everything we planned out so far. I already made sure that we have some cabling nearby that we're gonna drag through all of the steam turbines. And I also made sure we have some heavy watt wire going into the actual steam room in a way so that on the other side we have a vacuum and therefore no heat exchange going on. We should also be crafting some more steel. I don't quite have enough for the aqua tuners, so that's gonna come later. However, what we already can do is finally hook up the pipes right here in order to get some initial oil in the joint for our liquid lock. 
I'm gonna wait until we have a full tile of crude oil here at the bottom and then I'm gonna cut off the pipes. So the three tiles on the top can fill as well. There we go, about 870 kilograms seems to be the limit. Therefore we can cut this off, the rest of the oil should still flow in there. And that's gonna be it for our liquid lock, we can take this apart again. As a matter of fact, let's do this right away. All of this can go now, including the vent. I'm gonna wait to fill up the steam room with water until we are completely ready. This should be the last step, basically. I think for shicks and giggles, I'm already gonna start encasing the volcano here. So basically a ceramic layer all the way around. Then we're gonna dig everything up, collect the materials and make sure this is enclosed until we are ready to use it. Looks like we need even more ceramic for this. Jeez. Now maybe another thing we can do is get started with the insulated tiles. I think we're just gonna go with igneous rock for this. All it needs is to protect the airflow tiles from the magma. Now if we're lucky this is gonna be absolutely no problem at all. However, there could be a problem of having too much magma in one tile and therefore the insulated tile is gonna overpressure. But we'll have to put this to the test basically. There we go, insulated tile is here. It looks as though we have no magma spillage at least. Now this thing just needs to survive and I believe it would take immediate damage if it really were to overpressure. So my best guess is that we can actually do it. One thing I haven't really considered is the neutronium here at the bottom. That obviously is gonna get in our way and we will have to do some trickery for this. This is actually really inconvenient. I mean, right here we can just keep on going down, but these two doors are gonna run into issues. We might have to go through the ladder piece here and therefore daisy chain a couple of metal tasks to be able to get that heat. So I think for now I'm actually gonna disable these two doors and we're just gonna do all of the other ones for now. But there we go, two insulated tasks per mechanized airlock. By now we should have enough steel to at least build one aqua tuner. I'm gonna place this guy here, but I wanna swap it around. So this one is gonna be the first aqua tuner and then on the other side we're gonna have another one for the second loop. Now we can already take some igneous rock insulated pipes to get things started. We wanna get into the aqua tuner here from the top and I think I'm just gonna use bridges in order to jump over the vents. Actually, even better, we are gonna go through the insulated layer, so we don't have any temperature issues there either. We wanna cover one, two, three, four, five steam turbines, so that one here would be the last one. Take a bunch of bridges in order to hop back over to the aqua tuner, and then on the other side we're gonna come out. We're gonna go all the way over to the right side. We're also gonna hop out here in order to bypass the aqua tuner if necessary. And then we can go up in order to cool things down. We also wanna install a bridge here at the slot where the output is. So there's gonna be no confusion as to where the liquid has to go. And it's not gonna go through the aqua tuner twice. We then hop over here and the centerpiece of each steam turbine is gonna be a radiant pipe in order to cool them down again. And after the fifth turbine we simply go down in order to rejoin the aqua tuner and this is gonna be our tiny little loop. Let's see, we probably have enough iron in order to do the piping and finish the loop with the radiant pipes in the center of the steam turbines. All that's missing now is a liquid pipe thermo sensor that we're gonna place right there. Let's actually make this out of copper. And obviously we're also gonna need some automation wire that we're gonna connect to the aqua tuner itself. Let me quickly check, are we still crafting something here? Yes, indeed. I always have to be a little bit careful because the way I set it up at the moment, the resupply of fresh water to my bathrooms is cut off if I just keep on crafting with the metal refinery. So I kind of have to keep that in mind. So yeah, unfortunately in terms of symmetry, this is gonna be a little bit of an eyesore here with the neutronium, but I think overall we should be able to deal with it. We should now also be able to set up a couple of steel tiles. So each of the airflow tiles in the center is gonna be replaced with a steel tile, sucking out the heat of the magma itself. Maybe another thing we should prepare is the heavy watt conductive wire that I would like to have in the steam room so that once we close it off, we already have the upgraded wiring. That would be my preferred method. Wonderful, looks like we already have enough for the second aqua tuner that is gonna go here on the other side and we basically mirror everything we have going on. So from the output we wanna go over here and from the input we wanna bypass to over here, then we go straight up. We're then gonna do all the cooling with a radiant pipe for each of the steam turbines. And right here at this point we want to come down and actually loop back to the aqua tuner. We go down at this point, join the input, 
and then we have a thermo sensor right there with a bunch of copper automation wires. Oh, and I just noticed I have this first aqua tuner the wrong way around. Yeah, I do not want this. I'm sorry, this must have been confusing, but obviously we want the input here on the other side. Yeah, that makes a whole lot more sense. So all we're missing now is all the bridges. Let's go ahead and place these down as well. Actually, not here on the top. There should be the radiant pipes. So maybe let's do that first. One radiant pipe for each of you. And then the bridges we use in order to get back into the aqua tuner. Okay, that makes a lot more sense now. Let's see, we still have a little bit of iron left to do at least something here. Okay, that was too much. No, actually it built everything out of iron. We just need to keep on crafting here. I noticed another fatal flaw, which I now hopefully have fixed. Namely, the bridge obviously should go from the bypass into the output slot. So the flow of coolant is clear. Otherwise, if we have the bridge going from this output slot to the other side, then there is the risk of the water actually backing up into the aqua tuner again. That's not what we want. And I mirrored the same thing on the other side. I also noticed that it's not really symmetrical here with the steam turbines and that we can swap them around. So that is exactly what I'm doing here. I'm just putting it on the other side so that we have the output of the pipe on the left side and therefore we can make the entire design kind of symmetrical and mirrored. I think this is going to be more than worth it. Looks like we now have enough iron to finish the steam turbines as well as the cabling down below. One more thing we might want to make use of is the ethanol as a coolant for the steam turbines as well as a smart battery that we need to place here. As a matter of fact, let's check this out. Yeah, we're gonna need a smart battery. I can make this out of copper, just place it right there. And all we really want to do with that is hook up each of the steam turbines so they stop producing power when we don't need it. There we go, that's all hooked up now and I'm actually gonna set the smart battery to stop at 95% but already start at 80%. So magma power is gonna be potentially the first source of power that we use up rather than the coal for instance. But there we go, look at this, looking much better, all symmetrical and everything, I love it. In terms of coolant, it would be great to actually use polluted water for this. So I think I'm just gonna hook this up already. And uh, we can build this out of granite. So a couple of granite pipes and we are just gonna bring this down. Let's see, eventually we can hook it up to this pipe over here that I already prepared. Just gonna add a bridge right here. This pipe here is actually coming from the other planetoid, but this one here is the temporary one that we use to fill up everything we need to fill up. And obviously we can also use it in order to fill up our cooling loop. I think it's actually time to connect the power sources we have going on here. Yeah, that's already done. That means aqua tuners are gonna have the power and the steam turbines can supply the power. So all we really need to hook up is the smart battery there. Okay, maybe let's continue by finishing this volcano. I would like to dig myself in here. Oh, actually I cannot reach the bottom. Though I will be able to dig everything up and also pick everything up from these ladders. So that's gonna be good. And I wanna make sure this has the highest of priorities. And I guess it would have been advantageous to actually analyze it. So maybe if it is dormant, we can go ahead and analyze it right away. Minor volcano, it is dormant, so we are lucky. We're gonna analyze that at priority 9. We're also picking up all the materials and we're gonna finish the layer of ceramic. There we go, Gene is actually done analyzing the volcano. It is still gonna be dormant for a couple of cycles, so I'm already gonna go ahead and drywall this up with a couple of obsidian tiles and we will be able to consider this done. Oh, that actually went quickly. Yeah, if you lay down some priorities, they actually really go for it. So maybe I should do the same thing here with the cabling so they finally get this done. Come on guys, be better. Well now that volcano is secured, we can go back to our main contraption here and hopefully get this started soon. The next thing I would like to do is actually drop some water here on top of the steam turbine so that we have a thin layer spreading across the entirety of the contraption. And then as a next step we're gonna fill up the steam chamber and the cooling loop. Now the battery right here is actually filling up considerably quickly, so I think for now I'm gonna deconstruct this insulated tile so it's gonna be included in the cooling process of the steam turbines. 
Wonderful, Ren has built the liquid vent. That was indeed necessary. Now we should be able to simply hook this up and get some water in the joint. Now, how much are we gonna need? Just basically a thin layer. So I wanna make sure at some point I also cut this off again. And I'm guessing that might already have been enough. Let's actually disconnect this and see if we're right. This should now all drop here on the floor, no problemo. And if we're lucky, we already had enough to actually cover the entirety of the floor here. Why are you not hooked up to power yet? Jeez, they were slacking here. Wonderful, looks like we were capable of covering the entirety of the floor. That means this liquid vent can go again and we should be able to fill up the lower portion here with the steam. Well, initially water, but eventually steam. So once again, we reconnect these pipes, let water come all the way down and fill up the steam area. And here we can actually use a considerable amount. I definitely want around 50 kilograms per tile. That means around 200 kilograms per tile at the bottom, which is going to result in 50 kilograms per tile in the steam room overall. And there it is already flowing, the precious liquid. I like it. This is going to be a nice contraption to look at once it is running. Okay, let's say for now this is actually enough water. The last thing we need to do is fill up the cooling loops. And we also need to place a whole bunch of steel tiles. We actually want to replace everything beneath the steel doors. Looks like we're short just a little bit, but I'm still crafting some. In the meantime, I guess we can expand our pipes so that we will be able to fill up the cooling loops using a bridge. So this should be pretty straightforward. For now, I set the thermo sensors to above 7 degrees to make sure that the doors always stay open. This should be the last thing we activate just in case something goes horribly wrong. There we go, that is the last of the water. I want to make sure I cut this off for now. We're not gonna need that anymore, except we decide we need more water in the steam room. So now I should be able to set up these bridges connecting each of the cooling loops. And then what we want to do is connect this pipe here that comes from my polluted water area. The pump is going for it right away. Oh yes, I'm actually looking forward to this now. We can finally enjoy the fruits of our labor. And this power source, let me tell you, is gonna last for an incredibly long time. There is the last steel tile that I wanted to place. Polluted water is tagging along and because we have the bridges installed here, we shouldn't be at risk of overfilling the cooling loops. Now, before this actually happens, we should also decide for the temperatures here. If we are above, let's say, 15 degrees, then we want to cool down the water. That is gonna make sure we don't actually freeze it. Oh wait, we're using polluted water, so we can say if it is above zero degrees. Even better. Gonna copy that setting over to the other one. And now let's keep on filling up the cooling loops. Some of it, as you can see, is already running through the aqua tuner. And there we go. I would say the first cooling loop here is completely full. So I want to make sure uh, we destroy the bridge as soon as possible. And then the second cooling loop is almost completely full. And there we go. That is actually full therefore deconstruct the bridge here as well. So essentially we're not going to need any more new polluted water. Let's just go ahead and actually drop this back into the pool here. Yeah, I want to fill this back up again. So liquid vent for you and we want to make sure we reverse the direction of the bridge here. So the excess polluted water can actually flow back. Wonderful. Now the aqua tuners are going for it. I'm going to wait until we have the temperature regulated and then we can initiate all the other systems, I would say. Let's maybe pick up the materials here so they don't unnecessarily hang around, even though they are pretty hot. But it's just a couple of kilograms, who cares? Here we can see the polluted water is flowing out of the system and actually just to properly finish this, I think I'm already going to disable the pipes here. Just deconstruct everything and get it cleaned up. Whoops, I just discovered something that is uh, potentially a problem. Yes, I think we might want to stop the input very briefly. Otherwise, things are gonna break. Oh my gosh, I just discovered this in time. But yeah, because I swapped the aqua tuner, of course, the output is on the other side as well. Wonderful. The cabling is in the right spot again. Therefore, the aqua tuner should be bypassed. Just what I wanted to see. We're gonna keep on collecting a couple of materials that are on the floor, but other than that, we can get the contraption started. And all we really need to do for that is set up the thermo sensors. I wanna set them to a green signal if we are above 195 degrees. That means it's gonna wait until that temperature before opening the door. 
Actually, maybe as a safety margin, we're just gonna go to 190 degrees. We might have to fine tune this, but we're gonna copy all of these settings to each of the thermo sensors. And therefore, all of the doors should close at the same time, heating up the tiles here, and therefore also getting myself the necessary steam. And just like that, we are converting the water. Wonderful. And soon enough, the steam turbines should be able to go for it. Obviously, the doors also should open at a certain point. And the steam turbines should only really activate if we don't have enough power in the battery. And you can also see already all of the doors reacting to the temperatures. Right now, the steam turbines are going for it because we have less than 80% battery life. But yeah, I have to say, this is looking pretty good so far. Now the only door that is currently not functioning is this one here, obviously because it is right on top of a neutronium tile. But other than that this should uh, function perfectly, except maybe we need to regulate the temperatures a little bit. Could be that we need to go down to 185 degrees because of the delays. Maybe we even want to add some filter gates later on so that the doors don't open and close this frequently, but we'll have to see about that. Cool, this is now all essentially automatic and we will not have to take care of it any longer. I kind of like it. But yeah, I would say with that out of the way, we're gonna wrap up today's episode. I sure hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and hopefully I'm going to catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.